Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a Hi, Jackie Cation here. You're listening to The Dork Forest. You know the websites, dorkforest.com, thedorkforest.com, if you like a determiner. JackieCation.com has everything. Both of my podcasts, all of the stand-up stuff, the new album, links to YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all the things. But so, I think, does dorkforest.com, where you can look at old videos of different shows. Anyway, if you want to support the show... Tell people about the show, review it on iTunes, thumbs it up on Pandora or Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. I appreciate that. You can donate. You can donate monthly. PayPal lets you do that. You can also do my Venmo if you like. It's at Jackie Cation absolutely everywhere. And my email address is Jackie at JackieCation.com. And that's what the PayPal is. The PayPal link is on JackieCation.com and DorkForest.com. And go to any of them. Thanks for listening. There's merch. There's stand up there's tour guide you know you can find out where i'm touring this is getting long so let's get into the show hi jackie cation i'm in my mother-in-law's office in exeter california on the zoom with shelly mcclendon hello shelly mcclendon owner of the siren theater in portland oregon i'm playing it in september i've played it before it's always a delight portland oregon full of the civil war and yet people with good hearts. How are you and welcome. I'm good. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm prepared. <laughs> and I like that. It's at <laughs> Shells McBells in the Instagram. The Siren Theater is www. That's right. I'm in my 50s. Dot Siren Theater dot com. But there's also your personal, which is a uh, smooth jazz inferno dot com. Yes. yes. Okay, before we talk about your dorkdom, I need to know about smoothjazzinferno.com. What well, is happening? So I own the siren, but I'm also, you know, a performer and I've, yeah. I've done some stuff. And so I need my own website where people can go. And I'm like, do I want to have Shelly McLean? You know, like I just, yeah. like I, some people who are actors have really fun names for their website. And I'm like, sure. I want people to know when they look at the website, when they just look at the, the what is it, address? URL. URL, mm -hmm. uh, they kind of get it. They kind of get a little bit of flavor. And so I'm like. Do you smooth. play smooth jazz? No, but I, but you know. You enjoy smooth jazz. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I do. There you I go. I like to admit it, but I do. <laughs> well, uh, JackieCation.com, you could also go to FamilyPetAncestry.com. And that points you to JackieCation.com. <laughs> and it is entirely because I thought it was funny. So, um, and yet I continue to pay something like $11 a year for it. <laughs> so it's not, it's not, it's, anyway, so smooth jazz. I don't know anything about smooth jazz, by the way, but I know that it's on fire because smooth jazz do. inferno. Do I? I think you do. Have I been to a grocery store and I've heard smooth jazz? You absolutely have. Your dentist office, when you're on hold. Things on are happening. Phone. Is it, yes. is there a horn section? I love a horn section. Sometimes. Sometimes, okay. I mean, Kenny G, probably the most famous smooth jazz. Okay. I don't even know if he would consider himself smooth jazz, but he is. Let's let's judge him and call him smooth <laughs> jazz, though he might think him, he's a rock star. And uh, he would but, be incorrect, <laughs> but he could think that. <laughs> what I like about the, the Siren Theater, by the way, is that I'm going to be there <laughs> the 16th and 17th. <laughs> and when we first met, Lori Kilmartin and I did a, a, a show together. And we hung out for several hours and it felt like I had known you forever. Yeah. <laughs> it, felt, I, it literally, you know, when you meet somebody and you're like, oh, we would be friends if yes. we lived in the same town, mm -hmm. we would have coffee and brunches, things would happen. <laughs> but so in other words, uh, I like you. You're very nice. Oh, I like you too. Thank you very much. Now, <laughs> your dorkdom, not something I've ever wanted to watch. It is the world of a cult documentary. Yeah. You love a documentary about a bunch of cuckoo birds who've, lo who've lost the thread. I can't, I can't get enough. Can't I can't get, get enough. enough of it. I will watch, first of all, I'll watch a documentary just about anything. Okay. I love it. Uh, it doesn't even have to be good. Uh, the documentary, the last documentary, I think was that fire, salt, sweet. 
it's usually a food documentary with me. Mm-hmm. And it's usually the history of fire or uh, though there is a series on BBC where this very hilarious old professor lady uh, talks about uh, the Romans. Hmm. She's constantly dissecting the Romans. She's got a lot of uh, documentary series. Are these documentary films? Um, let's see. The, the ones one, that I gave from you, your yes. List? Yes, they are, they are all films, except What's, for The Vow. That okay. one is a series. And what do you think is the difference between a one-off film and a, and a series? Do you think, is there, That's are they question. different? Well, first of all, documentaries now, like the documentary series that that are happening now are super great. Like the ones on HBO, The Way Down, that's another super good one. The one about, um, uh, what's the, the leggings? (laughs) The leggings, selling leggings. Do you know what? Wow, no. (laughs) it's on HBO? Yes, it's, um, shit. It's not like, it's not Lululemon. Okay. Anyway, there's a oh. documentary about sell, like a pyramid scheme where people sell uh, whimsical leggings. It's a, <laughs> it's a multi-level marketing and it's a series. It's really good. Whoa. Okay. All it's right. Really good. That sounds like some bad life choices right there, but okay. That's but amazing. Like, Someone's making dollars. Yes. Do you and know like, that my father once got a, a free shipment of soap? And uh, in the 60s, he told me, and he, oh. him and a buddy of his had it bottled where it was a tiny bit of soap and then water and then sold it as a special soap. And, and that worked? Uh, well, they made several thousand dollars in 1967. So uh, that's a great deal of money. And then he, of course, uh, either gave it away or used it to shelter us indoors. Uh, I don't know what he didn't, he didn't invest it. This is what we know. He didn't, he didn't turn it into some sort of future. That's a great idea. Um, you know, I don't know my what, mom on that same thing, she, um, this is years ago, she opened up a bag of M&Ms. She was baking cookies and all the M&Ms were gray, which ooh. was like the winning bag of M&Ms. And so she won a, life, a lifetime supply of M&Ms. <laughs> that sometimes people there's just a snippet of someone's life where you're like what has happened uh does that mean we have they have my parents have m&ms in their house all the time no she just got a shit ton of coupons oh oh she had to she had to also take action yes which means it's not gonna happen if that's not um, gonna happen my friend hannes finney won a year of free wiener schnitzel <laughs> <laughs> which was wow. a hot it's a hot dog place and it's gross but the weird oh, thing I've been about, to Wiener Schnitzel. okay oh, and yeah. uh and he and he was talking about it he said now you make fun of me that i won a, a year of free with Wiener schnitzel but first prize was actually like 10 grand so second prize was a year of free Wiener schnitzel you know what you can you can you can equal that out like you could get ten thousand dollars worth of Wiener schnitzel in a year was that like Wiener schnitzel every day was there a limit I don't know. Uh, we never spoke of it again. I think that it was probably a choice on my part. Um, I should have Hannes Finney on the Dork Forest to talk about Wiener Schnitzel. I'm going to pick this first one. Yes. Holy ghost people. Yes. What the hell is that? Okay, so I found I'm out about this documentary killing. while watching another documentary called okay. Alabama Snake, which was on uh, Netflix. Okay. And it's about, okay, first of all, we need, kind of need to define what a cult is. Okay. A lot of the documentaries that I enjoy are about um, sex se- with a CTS. Okay. Sex of Christianity. <laughs> okay. Which isn't necessarily called a, considered a cult. And so I'm like, well, what? Is this just like religious documentaries that I love? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, But someone I, is weeded off in a very specific way. Like my oldest right. brother for many years had his own church. Mm. It wasn't, it was his own sect, uh, of, of, of Christianity. And, mm. um, and to my knowledge, it wasn't too creepy. It wasn't great. There was a mm-hmm. lot of anger, a lot mm-hmm. of judgment, a lot of hellfire, <laughs> but other than that, like, it wasn't like he went up into the mountains and was having sex with children. You know, he didn't, he wasn't saying, to have you a can't, harem. yeah. And that's where all these documentaries go, where all these cults seem to go south is weird sex stuff. Right, right. It, 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 it's absolute power corrupting, absolutely. Right. When, when in the case of Terry Cation, he had a hard life. 
And so when he found the Jesus uh, and decided to pass on the Jesus, it was kind of a very stern Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was like, well, and it was very, very moral and very, he once told me, because he got divorced about 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And he said, you know, I never cheated on her. And I said, it's a hell of an epithet. Is that what you want on your gravestone? There, you, you got to aspire to something greater than that. We haven't spoken in some time. Anyway, because I'm a dick and he is a grump. <laughs> so together. Dicks and grumps don't go together well. It's uh, oil and water. It's uh, <laughs> no, and, and we both, for, for reasons of self-care, have chosen not to. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> But okay. So anyway, so, so cults yes. were like Alabama so Snake. Of, yeah, so Alabama Snake. That was about. This was this was um, part uh, true crime, part cult, culty documentary. Okay. Where it was about, and Alabama Snake isn't even on my top five list, but it's a good one. <laughs> and it's about this. So there's a sect of super Pentecostal Christianity where they take that one verse from the Bible that talks about handling snakes and the Lord is powerful enough where if you are bitten by an asp, then it won't kill you or whatever the fucking verse is. And then they take that and they literally take snakes and they, they handle them to show like, this is how we, this is how we worship. This is how we, you know, wow. Is that is super the one verse. specific. Yes. Super uh, specific. You're going to hear my dog, by the way. Hi he's dog. A beagle. He's a beagle and he's yep, got a yep, lot yep. to say. Yeah, he does. Um, so anyway, so Alabama snake was about this someone murdered their wife or tried to murder their wife by via handling of a church snake. Yeah. <laughs> church snake. Yes. And they talked about this documentary, Holy ghost people where it's a super gritty, like there's no narration. It is just, they turn the camera on. There's some edits, but they turn the camera on it's black and white. And they are just filming this Pentecostal church service where finally, ultimately, they bring the snakes out. Everybody's, you know, working themselves into a frenzy. And it is so good. So comparing that documentary, I started talking about this earlier. Documentaries now are super produced, super like with slow motion and, you know. Pan and scan. Exactly. Ken Burns, Ken Burns, they've Ken Burns all of your, even your religious documentaries. Yes. And they're okay. gorgeous and, and they're wonderful. This is not that. This is okay. like someone with a super eight filming. And you can Secretly. see it on YouTube. Yes. Holy ghost people is literally just, he's a beagle. He's going to be barking at yes. many things because <laughs> that's what beagles do. Uh, we have a beagle lives around the corner. I sometimes just walk by just to light those beagles up. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like he's in pain all the time and he's not, that's just how he sounds. But anyway, so this, you can see this documentary on YouTube. It's so great. And at the end, can I spoil it? Yeah. Uh, are you kidding me? It's a documentary. So <laughs> you could probably read the article. Sure. So is this Holy Ghost you're talking or Alabama Holy, Snakes? Holy Ghost People. This is okay. super, this was filmed in the 60s. Um, oh. And at the end, they bring the snakes out and they're, they're dancing. And one of the pastors gets bit by a snake. And they're poisonous. Poisonous and, snakes. And, and they don't take the, the venom sacks out. Not even for the priest. No, because that would go against what, the, what that this one, one verse, verse says. And right. so he gets bit and he's like, oh shit. And he's like, and, and as this is like in the last 10 minutes of the film, you see his hand get progressively larger. It's totally swollen. And he's like, okay, um, this just happened. But you know what? I believe. I believe in the Lord. And you know what? Even if I die, that's still okay. The Lord is, the Lord's word still makes sense. And I'm like, what? Hold that up. Is, this is the longest suicide con in the world. This is like the long game. Yeah. You know, like I do want to kill myself, but I want an audience. Right. And I want it to be weird. <laughs> Did he die? I, wanted to, I, I don't know. Oh, God. It just ends. The movie just ends. But it's funny because <laughs> like you see, you see him kind of like, okay, yeah, this is great. And then people around him speaking in tongues and losing their shit. And there's kids who are just asleep in the pew. Because, you know, these meetings go on for hours. Oh, yeah. You're going to get a lot of, you're going to get a lot of, a lot of uh, footage. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. This, so and it's not, was his name it, Jamie Coots? I don't know. Uh, February, a Pentecostal pastor in Kentucky featured in the National Geographic Channel reality television show, Snake Salvation. Different no, show, no. different pile of crazies. Uh, and <laughs> I was, judge. 
I judge. This was in West Virginia. This church was in West Virginia. Coots died from a rattlesnake bite during his service. What kind of, what kind of, um, I believe they it? were, uh, the one that Holy Ghost people. Yeah. It was like a Pentecostal, you know. Oh, no, no. What kind of snake? What kind oh, of snake? I, think it was an, I don't know what kind of snake it was. It was, it was poisonous though. One, okay. of, the, one of the baddies. Okay. Um, I guess people die. I just tried to Google it. A lot of people are dying of snakes. The snake church is full of a lot of people that are dying. I don't know if you, you saw would... Moon Knight. Did you see Moon Knight? No. Una. Uh, Moon Knight is a, is a Marvel television program where there are two different deities, Khonshu and Amit. And Am- I'm going to weed off here. Uh, Amit <laughs> on my own dorkdom, which is Marvel. And uh, Amit is, they're both Greek gods. Mm-hmm. They have been marveled. They have been comic booked. So okay. those of you from Egypt who worship these deities, this pantheon, this is not your God. It might have some similarities, but it's very Thor played by Christopher Helmsworth kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So there's Khonshu and there's Amit. Khonshu is uh, supposedly the God of justice. Moon Knight works for that God. And then there's the bad guy who works for Amit. And Amit's God is a preemptive justice God. And uh, she can look into your heart and see if you've ever done anything wrong or if you're going to. And if you're going to, uh, you die anyway. And so with Khonshu, it's there's some due process. Uh, There is essentially you've done a crime. He sends Mm -hmm. Moon Knight after you. Moon Knight then kills you. There's judge, jury, and executioner all happens with Khonshu. But Amit, it's preemptive. And um, and so the only, the only reason I tell you that, why do I tell you that? Oh, is because uh, at the snake church, I'm sure they're like, you would live if you were pure with your Lord. Absolutely. Why you, bite you. And then there's you, something wrong with you. Right. That's on you. And yeah. the actual only thing wrong with you is that you're handling snakes. <laughs> um, so, and so that's, that's the Holy ghost one. That's Holy ghost. Holy people. ghost people, 1967. You can see it on YouTube for free. It's great. Okay. Oh, exciting. What about the source family? Okay. The source family, you used to be able to see it on Netflix. It's not on there anymore. I'm not sure where you can see it. I watched this two or three times. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so good. So this is, um, first of all, it takes place in LA in the seventies and I love any footage about LA in the seventies. I grew up, you know, in Southern California, I was born in okay. 1972. So I love any sort of, any sort of documentary or any footage or pictures of LA in the seventies. I just love it. Did you ever and, watch That's the last documentary I loved and I own it, which is the, the skateboarding one. Oh, uh, Dogtown and Z-Boys. Yeah. Oh, and it's kind of I've watched it, that. Oh, I could I I could watch it right now. I love it. Right now. I own the DVD because I was like, first of all, these are supposedly poor kids, but they're poor kids in LA. So yeah. of course they own cameras. Mm-hmm. Right? Of course they have access to movie cameras in 1970. And the soundtrack to that movie is so to good. die for? Oh, yes. interesting. All right. All right. It's interesting. So anyway, the source family. So this takes place again, LA in the 70s, and it started um it there was a restaurant called The Source that was on sun- the Sunset Strip. Okay. Vegetarian restaurant, like one of the first vegetarian restaurants from what I understand. It was featured in the movie Annie Hall. Okay. So it was a oh, super I'm popular sure. restaurant. Yep. And the guy that opened it was this man who I think his name was Jim Baker. Not the Jim Baker. Just a Jim Baker. But fucking side note, have you seen The Eyes of Tammy Faye? Not the one, not the actual movie, but the documentary. When we are done here, you're going to hang out and you're (laughs) going to put that on. It is so good. It's uh, narrated by RuPaul. I think it was, it came out in the nineties. So good. What? Narrated by RuPaul actually kind of does draw me in. Okay. So good. Anyway, backing up different Jim Baker. It was this guy Mm -hmm. who he was like six foot four, like hair, like hair, very similar hair to mine. Okay. Just gorgeous. (laughs) Like gray hair down to his shoulders and a beard to match. He was just like, gorgeous he looked like god like when you yes. think about the oh, Lord. Right. all the photos yes yeah. <laughs> and he started the restaurant and of course he started like his own kind of spiritual movement because that it seems like that's one thing i'm learning is like in the 70s people were like cults were just coming out 
Just uh, right. every, everybody had a cult. Right. It was a cult of personality. And then you yes. needed it's like podcasts today. <laughs> And uh, everybody was just like, we, we don't have the podcasting equipment, so we're just going to do it uh, door to door. And so and we're going to all live together and have, and there's going to be weird sex stuff, which is you know, kind <laughs> of like a podcast. Sure. Um, and so he started like having like meditation meetings in the restaurant. Long story short, all these people started to like follow him. They all moved into this big mansion together in Los Feliz. Wow. And like, and the, the 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 pictures that they have, like they would have these photo shoots mm-hmm. and everybody was gorgeous. Sure. And they would have these photo shoots with like everybody hanging out the windows and stuff. And you're like this. Because they're all in there because they were all probably he's like probably in his 40s or 50s, but yes. everybody else is in their 20s. Yes. And there's some, something- are, and some are even underage. Oh, well, of course, because it was it was a, it was a simpler time. You guys, uh, people were simpler. idiots. Yeah, <laughs> people were gross and idiots. Congratulations, uh, next generation for putting the kibosh on that. Kibosh. OK, so. So he, everybody's having a great time and it all starts out <laughs> great. Like everybody, like cults start off great. Sure. You you're know what like, I mean? And it's a vegetarian restaurant. He's just figuring out a, a good way to make Brussels sprouts. Sure. Right. Right. And it's in the seventies. You didn't have a lot of options. Like we're just talking fruits and vegetables and grains back in the seventies. Right. Right. Yeah. So everybody moves in together. Everybody's having a great time. Everybody's having sex with each other. It seems like this is working out. This is great. (laughs) He like has a wife and then starts having more wives. Oh, so it was fine. And then he was like, you know what I'm going to do? I need 14 wives. Uh, he, though you don't want you want an even number so you don't ruin the bunk bed situation uh, everybody which is needs a-, a partner to go on the roller coaster together <laughs> right and uh so that's kind of the beginning of the end because you see his one wife yeah but like the his first wife and she's just like super stoked and like so into him and right. then he starts adding more wives and in the pictures you slowly see her just like like her oh, face just get just madder changed. and madder and yeah. oh, he, poor- yeah he starts, you know, getting, getting a big head and stuff. And there's like footage of and him she, like delivering babies in the fucking house. Oh, she see, he starts having babies with these people probably. Oh yeah. Or, course. and they're having babies with each other. Does his wife also get to sleep around? That I don't remember. Right. And she, and, and, and it probably, probably wasn't. Not. And it probably wasn't like put into canon. Like it's probably in the notes that he gets to have as many wives as he wants, but it's not put into the notes that she can have as many husbands. Right. Because these people are- It's also like an add-on. Like things are going, this is what the cult is about. And then like later on, like, you know what? I know this wasn't original in the original (laughs) text. It wasn't on the menu. I feel like I need to have a wife who's 15. Oh, God. I feel like the Lord is telling me that. Oh, you know what, what I and mean? Was the Lord involved? He was really into. Um, no, I mean, I, I, I sure. You sure. Know, God is not the Christian God. Oh, it was. Um, it was. It was always oh, a hippie God. Yes, it was. It was just some spiritual. Yeah, this wasn't. A, this wasn't Christianity. This was kind okay. of like. I don't know. This was just something larger than him. Yes. And and it was something larger than him was telling him that he needed to have several young ladies. Yes. And, uh, and they were like, sweet. On tap. Up. Yeah. Yeah. And as <laughs> and he so would he walk could with them. <laughs> he would walk around with them like in a group. It was oh. him and all these gorgeous ladies. And, you know. And then they oh, decided, again, is it all right if I just ruin all these documentaries? Yes. For yes. I will put it as a spoiler alert that these are documentaries. First of all, I need to know how a documentary ends. Sure. If I'm going to start watching something, that's why I mostly watch food ones, because guess what's going to happen at the end? Dinner. That's sure. never going to be anything horrible. So mm-hmm. in this case, I'm, I'll am let people know that this is a, sp- a spoiler rich right. um, and they can they can watch it being played out themselves. So and, you know, cults typically don't end well. Right. This is not this isn't. The, this Other is than not Scientology and Mormonism, and which seem to just Jehovah's continue, Witnesses. right? Right. Yes. These are these are we're still in the middle of those stories, yes. as well as Christianity itself, yes. and and Hinduism and Islam and all the things. All of it. Uh, we're all in the middle of the ones that are ongoing. It's the ones. Did that you just... know? Did, I'm sorry to interrupt you. That's good. I will did talk. You, <laughs> did you know that I went to seminary? I did not. I, are you uh, an internet priest? My husband's an internet is ordained on the, on the internet. 
No, I actually attended a conservative Baptist seminary. I was grow. I was raised oh. Baptist, and was like I Southern too- Baptist or no, 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 no. I mean California, California. Baptist. Yes, California right, Baptist. California, California Baptist. <laughs> was it super bossy? Yeah, very okay. conservative. Very like you don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't have sex before you get married. You get to date. I was- no but we but my mom let my sister and I take dance classes which was nice oh that is nice um but I was a, a super bought into it super bought into it and then I was like I need I'm gonna go get my master's in counseling which I have and I'm gonna go to this <laughs> <laughs> which I love that tone of voice <laughs> and I went to a seminary to do it so I didn't get like a master's of divinity or whatever but it was like oh okay yeah, I'll go do this and it was going to seminary and taking theology courses that I was like, wait, what is this? <laughs> yeah. The more you scratch at stuff, the more you find out that it's made of bees. Yeah. Uh, there's just two, like the, one of the greatest things about the Armenian church is that it is in Armenian. Mm. Guess who does not speak Armenian? <laughs> this one right here. So as uh-huh. far as I'm concerned, it remains what I was taught as a child, which is be like the nice man in the picture and get your dad some coffee. Those are the two <laughs> tenets of the Armenian church. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I can live with that. Yeah. And uh, he likes coffee to this day. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so that, that is. So, we're, so I think that's, that's kind of why I like watching these documentaries is, is, is it's kind of helping me work out some things. Y- your own spiritual journey kind of. Thing. Yeah. And my own other like, people. Yeah. Like, wow. Other people have totally bought into things. Well, everybody's searching, you know, everybody yeah. to some extent needs to, and even if your, your, your God is just the universe right. or the earth or, you know, trees and, or a pile of, I mean, it's, it's when it becomes a pile of human beings. Like if your God is this, <laughs> you know, this, this guy and, and the, and the community that surrounds it. Mm-hmm. Those are made up of flawed human beings. Right. So that, that can break more than just going, I think it's going to be the, the sky or the sun or the, the science itself, which changes mm-hmm. all the time. Right. Right. And the one thing with the sort, so cults often also will be like, we are the only, we are right. Nothing else is right. Mm-hmm. You have to, if you don't do what we say, then you are wrong. You have to like shun anybody that's not a part of this. That's where cults go that's where they're right. where the, and they need give 10%. Us all of your, yes give us yeah. all of your whatever um but the source family was not like that they were like you can go at any time like there was no okay people were so, welcomed in they were what they could leave if they wanted to by the way it is available on amazon prime for free oh oh great there you go it's with your prime uh subscription i am told according to the internet watch what it, a, it is so what good. about the vow what about the well, vow? can i tell you real fast oh, how, yeah. how, the, how father yod dies oh he dies, God. everyone this at is the end of, of the, this yeah at the end of it and there are people who still would follow him like there are still people who are still like this was amazing i still do what he tells me to do so they all moved to hawaii he's like <laughs> like i think the feds were or the the irs was kind of like what are you doing what are you doing here so he's yeah. like let's go to hawaii and it didn't work out hawaii did not work out no they won't find us in, a, in hawaii <laughs> an island an archipelago yeah there's not there's not a lot of places to run anyway right. And they, so they bought all this property, but they didn't have any, they were, they didn't know what they were doing. So it was going, <laughs> re, they was going real south and he decided one day, I'm going to go hang gliding. I don't know how to do this. I've never done this. And he hang glided himself to death. <laughs> wow. He just like crashed and uh, we are seeing a pattern rangers. <laughs> I want him to be holding a snake while he decides to do this. Holy smokes. Yeah. He d- wait, he just bought a hang glider essentially and jumped off a cliff? Yeah. Did anyone film that? I think there was film of him maybe. I think there was film of him leaving, but I don't think they found <laughs> Yeah, you know, they were the just crash. like Oh my but, god. I mean there are people film. there are people who are still like this was like I, I he was he was my guy like this was this was my thing everybody changed their name to something super kooky like electricity <laughs> or you know isis or whatever they all changed their name did you see the new after uh, ghostbusters movie that kid's name is uh podcast no it's his name yeah the kid's name is podcast and uh because he wants to have a podcast and uh he carries around a microphone 
no cord. Anyway, so. Um, so anyway, that's how that one ends. That is amazing. Yes, um, yes. Wow. And. Oh, there was something about. So is there. Do they think that there was some sort of tampering with the, is it, does it, are there conspiracy theories? No, I think some people thought that he did that. Like he was killing himself. They thought he was, uh, he's doing, he was oh, done. This was right. right. Again, the long con of, of suicide. Right. This is uh, very elaborate. Right. And, um, but they good. said too, that he crashed on a beach and there was no, he had no external injuries. What? Like he, he was died nine hours later. Uh, okay. Well, you know, Paul Wellstone. Anyway, um, <laughs> there was some sort of drama. So, okay. How about The Vow? Okay. Have you seen The Vow on I've, HBO? No. So there, there's the, the first part, I think there's like four or five episodes. They are available now. I think it came out last year. They are getting ready to show the second part because this is still an active crime scene. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> the vow, this is so good. Oh my God. This is one of the series. Uh, it's super well produced, like super high production sure. value. Shiny. And it's like people, you see people who are getting out of the cults, who are trying to like help other people. And um, it's the, the Nexium cult where, have you not, you've heard of this. No. There is an actress she was on some fucking show. Right, right. Well, good for her. I for think her first name work. is Allison. She uh, was like recruiting women into this cult. And the women, a lot of them got branded with the with this guy's initials. Oh, oh, I did. I did hear about that. Yeah. And she's um, in jail now. And he's in jail. And yeah, um, yeah. Uh, what's what's the great branding about, of people? Yes. Lord. And I forget the guy's name. I'm not great with details. By the no, way. no, that's fine. Seduced inside the Nexium cult. Yes. N X I V M. It looks like Roman numerals for yes. a million. And it um, seemed like when they when they first start talking, it seems like it's kind of like a career building, like a self help. Um, this is how you uh, become your best self in your career. Like that's what the the kind of seminar seems like. And this is different from The Vow, or is it no, part the, of the, the same? No, the name of the documentary is The Vow. Okay. But it's about the Nexium cult. Because okay. Because people were making this vow, and then they got branded. The women got branded for some reason. It says it's an American cult that engaged in sex trafficking, forced labor, and racketeering based in Clifton Park, New York, uh, with a click so that you can go to their Chamber of Commerce. Wikipedia is weird. Uh, so... <laughs> That is so weird. It was a recruiting platform for a secret society called DOS. D-O-S. Mm -hmm. What is that? DOS. Keith Renier? Yes, that's his name. Okay. Keith so, Renier, Nancy Salzman, Allison think, Mack. That's the one. She was on like um, Smallville or something like that. <laughs> oh my show. God. Okay. But um, you see, so you see this guy, Keith Renier. And first of all, all the, you know, racketeering and the sex stuff, of course, you don't see that, right? Like, that's like all. Right. That's just allegations. Yes. Right. And you see this guy and he's the guy that's like getting all these ladies to like sleep with them. And you're like, when you see him, you're like, I'm sorry. Right. He looks like every Montessori school dad. That yeah. guy. That, and that's a great picture of him. Yes. Well, wow, he looks like a mouth breathing dude in his 60s. <laughs> this he's, this guy he, has, he does not have any gravitas. And I don't <laughs> understand like how these ladies were like, this is the dude. And so he also, like a lot of these cult leaders like themselves to be filmed. Okay. And so um, I'll talk about another one if we have time. Holy hell, that guy wanted everything he did to be filmed. Oh, wow. But, but but this guy, Keith Rainier, he had people walk around filming him and stuff. And so you see him kind of, you see how he interacts with people and how he draws them in. And like, I'm sitting there putting myself in this, in this, like you see him talking to Allison Mack when she first starts, you know, getting all involved. And she goes to visit him. She goes to talk to him while he's playing volleyball 
for some reason. Like this, he would play volleyball at like midnight. <laughs> and so he's, she's like, oh, this is where I could go talk with this guy. So she goes to um, volleyball okay. and he takes a break and they're sitting there talking and uh, he's talking to her and she starts crying for some fucking reason because of something he said and I'm like what did he just like I'm listening to him and I'm putting myself in her position and I'm like if I was talking to this guy I would be like I don't, I don't know what this is I don't right right you're not but, saying anything but, but he's he triggered her to, somehow he knows how to appeal to narcissists wow if you say the right thing to a narcissist again this is the now this is my mental health counselor coming out if you say the right thing to the narcissist if you appeal to their narcissism you're gonna get you might get what you want Okay, it's sort of, it's it used to just be called flattery, but um, but so everything's like, very specific right now. Um, okay, <laughs> so he has said something. Have you heard of? I mean, and you have. Uh, the, remember the 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 term negging? N e g g i. So you have negative speech towards someone right. that them that makes whatever kind of person they are want to double down and make you like them even more. Right. And right. so there's that. And then there's just regular flattery. It's, and- well, it was, it's more like he was, let's see if I could think back. He, you know, she was talking about some vague, like, I don't know, I'm an actress and I just don't know uh, if I, you know. If I'm worthy or if, if, I, I'm, if worthy. I'm ever, ever going to make it. Right. I just have, you know, things are holding me back. Just kind of like things in a vague sense. And he's just like, well, is that, you know, do you it sounds like you're just holding yourself back or something like just vague something bullshit that land like, what like that sounds yeah. like a fishing exhibition ex- <laughs> so like like sort of that caricature of therapist talk right. uh, you know whenever someone says that you know well i i shoplift uh and i don't need the money you know i have the money to do something but i shoplift anyway the classic question is is what are you getting out of it Thank you. Is it the thrill? Is it the uh, the is it the danger? What is it? Thank it's you. interesting that your beagle can open a door. Anyway, so <laughs> but um, so it's sort of like that. It's sort of like mm-hmm. trying to find that the 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 crack in the armor mm-hmm. that where you can get in there, right? And then all exactly. of a sudden they're writing you checks. Yes. Okay. He also, and so he, you know, convinced all of these people through these like seminars to like join up and it was like super expensive. It was very similar to Scientology where you had to like pay for certain trainings or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then um, he also had a singing group. Oh, that of was another thing about did. the source family. They, the, yeah. source, the source guy, they also had a band that he fronted <laughs> and they were awful. Yeah, they were awful. And so, and by we, the way, we're talking with Shelly McClendon, who has a website called Smooth Jazz Inferno. <laughs> so she knows her music. I should Smooth know. Jazz I should know. You should know. Yes. Okay. So everybody's <laughs> okay, got so, a band. And, yeah, so, and, and, and the new people, the people in the vow, yes. have uh, the Partridge family. They're a band. That's they're okay. Called uh, Simply Human. Oi. Yeah. Okay. And they're, right. they're a stink bomb. And so, (laughs) and they like travel around and perform and stuff. Anyway, the, the documentary, like it really builds really well. Like you see this woman who lives in Vancouver and she's gotten out and she's one of the ones that's gotten branded and she's married to someone that she met in the cult and they're, they're, they're out and they're trying to like, I think they're trying to get other people out because, oh, because um, there's an actress whose daughter's in there. Who is it? It's not Bo Derek, but it's someone like Bo Derek. Maybe it okay. is Bo Derek. Maybe it is. Um, who's no? Uh, it's not. You can look it up. <laughs> right, right. The vow, the actress. So, um, trying her to get her daughter's out. in there, and they're trying to get her. They're trying to help this woman get her out of the cult. Right, right. So, um, it's, it's Gwen Catherine Page. Uh, uh, India no Um, so um, some actress's daughter 
I think she's an actress. Gosh, I am so great with details. I can really tell the well, good story. Well, the thing is, is the good news is, is this is not part of the spoiler. You guys, <laughs> if you watch The Vow, then you'll know. You'll see. Where Catherine Oxenberg's daughter. Yes, Catherine is Oxenberg. Is that? Catherine Oxenberg, yes. Okay. She was um, in D- Dynasty or Falcon's how, did, how did they get her out? Uh, I don't think they did. Okay. All right. Because, I mean, I you know, my brother. I think that's part of part two. We're, we're at minute like 35, right? Okay. And I'm mm-hmm. going to drop a real bomb on you. I'm going to drop some a huge reveal. Dude. My brother, Phil, who has done at least three episodes of The Dork Forest, was in the Moonies. Oh. And we, watched, had to watched... kid, we had to kidnap and to program him. And the Moonies, they are like, they're really into guns. Uh, well, now, now they are. Uh, mm. He's really into fishing now. But, uh, and it's been 40 odd years, maybe 50. Mm. But uh, he is, uh, he was really, they're really into sales of granola back in the early mid 70s when he was in. Oh, he was mm. in in 1977. He was 76, 77. I think we kidnapped and deprogrammed him. And when I say we, I mean a bunch of people that my mother-in-law, that my stepmother uh, found the name of on Phil Donahue. Wow. And uh, so I've, I've been meaning, I don't think we ever did a dork forest with Phil about the Moonies, but we should because that's how we got him out of that. And then he became a deprogrammer. Interesting. And he said, that they would, the weirdest thing about it, he eventually stopped because they had to reprogram people and they made them all into Christians. And um, if you wanted your kid made back into a, a, a Muslim or a Jew, you had to pay extra because they had to hire that out. And, um, but if you wanted sort of a basic sort of Protestant or over, you know, a basic sort of Lutheran kind of Christianity, mm-hmm. everybody could fake that. And, um, <laughs> wow so, yeah pretty weird huh and was he mad like when you went and, and he was him? no he was all right with it he was uh <laughs> he had lost like 70 pounds he was huh. always kind of a big kid and then he was super skinny when when he came and um when he when he when 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 he walked into our trap which was baited with food and then <laughs> We, my dad took him to our, my uh, cousin. Was there like a trail of food with a box and a stick? And, and a, a stick that he knocked down is <laughs> like, and pull it. And he's in. And essentially they kept him in like this slum, this, uh, this sort of abandoned building that my cousin Morad owned and in Racine, Wisconsin for a week until finally he was like, fine. And then, wow. then they put him in a halfway house for a couple of months. And then he became a program himself. And then he sold printing for 45 years and had four children. Well, three children and his nice stepson, a nice young man. And, uh, and has been married now twice and just recently remarried. And uh, things are lovely. He got out of the cult, didn't start his own. This is my second oldest brother. And so, yes, so we you have, have an, you have an interesting history with religion in your family. Uh, we really like. do, don't we? Anyway, but I want to know. So the vow, that's a series of like six or eight. And there's it's going to be a series like yes. there's a second season. Yes. Yeah, so it ends. The last season ends with Keith Rainier getting arrested. Da, da, da. And so he's in he's in prison right now. Oh, good. And um, then so part two, we'll, we'll talk about that. We yeah when yeah well you'll come back you'll tell me what's happening in season two of the bow <laughs> but what is holy hell because yeah holy hell is a documentary again this was on Netflix maybe you can find it on Amazon okay. um, about a, the Buddha field cult Buddha that was started in the eighties kind of late eighties and I think into the nineties it still exists it sounds like in Hawaii okay they went over to Hawaii they still recruit people from yoga studios. And it was the, the big <laughs> takeaways from Holy Hell. This is a real good one wow. to watch. This guy wanted everything filmed. And so there's a ton of footage that's fascinating. Wow. He wore, um, he, I don't know how he got people to follow him, but he was super charismatic. He was very fun, I guess. There's like footage of him like dancing and like how getting people to dance with him on a beach for some reason and he would often just be wearing dolphin shorts what shorts with dolphins on them no don't you remember i don't remember dolphin don't you remember shorts? dolphin shorts from the 80s they're like real thin 
and short and they're kind of like they look like running shorts but oh but they know. ride up you yeah, on it a little they, bit they, they accentuate can. your butt yes there's like sure. a sl- like a slit on the side he would often oh, just wear those wow and like Reeboks he wow. often had a fully lined eye oh wow and towards the end of at least the documentary he was getting lots of plastic surgery but acting like he wasn't oh and, okay wow you know and so his, the big takeaway from that was that, of course, it and again, it's still, it's, through you yoga studios. Yes. And he would there was weird sex stuff. He would just like get get mostly men to have sex with him who didn't really want to, but would like Kevin you know, Spacey. Hmm. A little bit be. of that. It says it's not to be confused with the UK based charity called Buddha Field yes. uh, events organization and Sangha Buddha Field, which has no links with this group. Um, wow. Uh, and he, so he really, he really wanted to be a performer himself. Sure. And so he would like require all of his people to like, they would, they would have like these big dance performances, fully costumed, fully produced on a stage and no one would be there to watch it because everybody in the cult was in it. Wow. And. Oh, so everybody got to be in. So everybody got to be in it. But so they were just performing. They were just essentially having it was, you know what it was? It was kind of a LARP, a live action role <laughs> playing because uh, everybody because there's you don't watch a LARP. You just play. Right. Mm-hmm. And. Um, yeah. Yeah. This guy. It turns out it looks like he did sit-ups. Yeah, he was he, he was super super in shape. He this also guy, had that's the guy. Those are dolphin shorts. Those are dolphin shorts. And look yes. at his penis. What's happening there? We can we can. There's no that, he, no. I don't think that's to the real. imagination is left. Well, that and it doesn't feel like it's real. It feels like he's packing. He did have a, a cameo. Or I don't know if it's a cameo, uh, but he had a small part in either The Omen or Rosemary's Baby. I think it might have been Rosemary's Baby. Wow. And that was his, that was his claim to fame. But, mm-hmm. the, but mm-hmm. the cult, of, the documentary itself, again, there's lots of footage and the guy that's making the documentary goes back and confronts him. Like he finds him yeah. on a beach in Hawaii and it's just, you know, nothing really happens with the confrontation. I think the guy's name is Michelle, Michael or Michelle. Yep. That's, that looked right when I was there for a hot moment. Yeah. Um, at that Wikipedia page. And then I went <laughs> for a photo because I mean, he's, he's sort of regular, he had regular features. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the thing about Los Angeles is a lot, a lot of these were started in Los Angeles. Yes. Sort of. There's a couple ways you can go. You can get into production or you can go <laughs> ultimate banana land and try to mm-hmm. you know and that's why i think podcasts have really bled off a lot of these sort of cult people but it has also created a different kind of cult like if you think about a guy like joe rogan who was on mm. he was on a tv show right he was, was on survivor he, frazier joe was, rogan was it i thought he was on a reality show I thought he was i thought he played a button pushing uh, dj on frazier oh. Did he? I don't. Yeah. And then he turned into it was like it would be like if I became a security guard at the at the at the airport, because that has been my only acting role. And granted, his was recurring. But I um, was on Murphy Brown as as an airport security guard. (laughs) And it would be like if I decided to do that for a living because it. that's how, what Hollywood saw me as mm. and Hollywood saw him as a right wing shit wit. and so he said to himself they're I'm just right gonna accept it. they're right mm-hmm. and now 200 million dollars later it's all working out for him mm. I wonder if there will ever be a Joe Rogan documentary do you think oh, there has to be I bet there's one in the works right now don't you oh think? my god I would, I would think so. And when you told me that this guy liked to be filmed, I was reminded mm-hmm. of another documentary I saw, which was a Madonna documentary mm. where Warren Beatty was in it. Oh yeah, it was a, wasn't it? Uh, it came out in the nineties. Right. It was a long she time was ago. Under, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was on tour, yeah. and um, and at one point there was like the director or somebody said to Madonna because Warren Beatty was in the green room. They were dating, I guess. And, uh, and truth or dare. 
truth or dare and yeah. the documentary and the director or somebody or the, the somebody behind the camera said do you want me to turn the camera off and warren Beatty goes she never wants you to turn the camera off don't be ridiculous and um i thought that was my favorite part of that that particular um he, moment he, he right said there. a lot he said a lot and they, they did were, not work out and now what is the devil's playground oh my god <laughs> Again, I've watched this one a couple times. Okay. This is, so this one isn't so much, I don't know, is it a cult? Or is Amishness a cult? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I always think that there's a certain amount of credibility if it's, like eventually Scientology, I mean, yeah. it's been around for 50 years. There are but children Amish, that were raised in it. Yes. And, and oh, the, what? Devil's Cri Playground, is that the one you said was where they get to go out and, yes. and, because there was an episode, I think, of either Castle or Bones or NCIS, <laughs> one of those sort of like or Law and Order, mm -hmm. right? Where they they it's there the kid is killed. He's out on his devil's room playground springer. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's it called? Room Springer. Room Springer, right? And then Law and Order is like, well, we have to solve this crime, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. So yes, Room Springer is that's what Devil's Playground is about. It's about the the thing in um i don't know if all amish um cultures do this but but amish people are christians and they don't believe again this is according to the to the film to the documentary yes it was the documentary they don't they believe that in order to you cannot make an informed decision to become a christian to like follow the lord until you are older and like you have to like make that decision yourself which and i so think is yeah, even as much as I know of it, which I know from essentially an episode of Bones or Law and Order, uh, it sounds like a fair thing to do. Yeah. Like if you're going to raise a kid in a religion, you had to go to college uh, to right. learn the, 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 what, what else might happen. But if you decide you don't want to do it, then you get shunned. Oh, so you can never see your family again? Yeah. So it's kind of like, well, is this really a choice? Oh, that, we're that doesn't feel like a choice. Right. And so room springer is when the, the kids get to go out, usually 16, 17, 18, whatever. They don't have to live in the community, um, but they a lot of them still do. But they get to go out. They get to like experience what it's like to not be Amish. So they are drinking, they're smoking, they're you know, having sex. Um, they sometimes get into drugs. And then they're like, okay, what do you, do you want to come back? Or, and if you want to come back, then we're, we're here for you. But if you don't, then you can just fuck off and we're not ever going to talk to you again. Wow. And so... It's about that, you know, experience for kids. Right, and right. <clears throat> they follow that is a some couple of serious trauma. I know. And it's like, just imagine what it's like for these kids to like totally sheltered, totally very simple living, you know, very yeah. family oriented to no just buttons, according to the to... TV, according to the movie Witness. Exactly. No electricity. No buttons. <laughs> <laughs> but although that's another thing about the documentary, is they kind of point out like just through pointing things out, just like stating objectively what's happening, they point out like, this is a, you guys are a little bit flexible, but you act like you're not flexible. Like all the kids have cell phones. <coughs> you know what, what? I mean? Yeah, they okay. have cell phones. And here's what's crazy. Again, this is a, a, in this documentary, whatever, I don't know what, you know, Amish. Right, we can't speak to all the Amish and we are no, not. Yes. And, Know in your hearts, Rangers, and you do, <laughs> that information is not our strong suit. Enthusiasm is our strong suit. Go ahead. Exactly. So there is this. <clears throat> so there, there's a, a, a guy and a girl, and they're courting each other, right? And which means like we're going to get married. That's like okay. that's the you know, that's the end goal. They're courting, <clears throat> and so this one girl. Uh, courting this this guy's courting her and they go on a date but they have to have a chaperone right which makes you know that makes amish sense but sure. what does not make sense is that they can sleep in the same bed afterwards are they bundling are they bundling like it's the 12th century where they're each wrapped in their own blanket <laughs> <laughs> i don't know but lo and behold there's lots of teen pregnancy oh lo amish and behold community. tab a <laughs> slot a and then all of a sudden a release of goods and services um I have an analogy for everything, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like they point out things that's like, wait, what? What? And, but, but what else is hilarious is, <clears throat> so this, 
So they're just kind of following, following kids around on the room springer. And the guys typically don't dress Amish when they, when they go out, they wear, you know, regular jeans and a t-shirt, jeans and a t-shirt, but the girls still often will dress Amish. So they still, you know, and they have like these giant parties, like these like Amish teen parties in a field. There's no electricity, but it is like cuckoo bananas. Everybody's just like raging their asses off. All the guys like look normal, but all the (laughs) Holly hobbies are just like running around, like making out and smoking and, and wow i yeah. bet you if you were a 17 year old amish dressed girl you could get some real action out there <laughs> with amish boys or without mm-hmm. uh because that outfit is is all kinds of sex fantasy right there all <laughs> kinds of weirdo kind of going what's under there same shit that's under a t-shirt mm-hmm. and a pair of jeans my friend uh i don't know why but that bonnet really is get me going get me revved up mm-hmm. weird yeah so how does that end it ends, oh gosh. Because they follow end? several kids, right? They follow they, very specific They follow a, a few. There's this one guy who you're just like, oh, are you going to make it? He decides to, he, he room spring us and he gets into meth. And he gets into selling meth and taking meth. And so you're like, oh, this seems kind of, he gets, you see him get really paranoid and he's, you know, living in this kind of shitty house. And you're like, oh, you kind of need to go back. Like you're not, right, you're not right, handling right. this well. <laughs> right. You might actually have a, an addictive personality. That's yes. actually, this is going to end poorly. Yes. Mm. And I believe he goes back. I think all the kids go back. Maybe there's one that doesn't, but because they're just like, you lose everything that you've, all of your family, if you don't. So it's right. But it would be an excellent way to get away from an abusive family. Oh, for sure. Like if you have like, let's say you're one of your family members are are, are horrible mm-hmm. and are sort of abusing you in some sexual or physical or even emotional and, and browbeating the hell out of you. It might be a great way to sort of cut loose right. and go, <laughs> well, I will miss my little brothers, but right. I got to go. <laughs> maybe they too, maybe I could go out and make a life for us and they could come to me when they, when they, when their Roomba time has come. Mm-hmm. And notice how I've shortened it, <laughs> shortened it to Roomba. Uh, ethnically sensitive. That's what I think of myself. Yeah. When I mm-hmm. think of myself as a person who thinks of sensitivity training. Absolutely. Jackie Cation is the one you go to. <laughs> nope. It's uh, you start out in dum dum land and then I have to be taught. So I was just I will I will weed off. We're almost at the end of the hour, but I will weed off and tell you that I have been watching. Essentially, it's like watching a thousand episodes of Law and Order and Castle and and it's everything your mom is watching. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I've been watching a Toronto, a Canadian murder mystery show called Murdoch's Mysteries. Mm. And there are 15 seasons, which means that there's easily. 300 episodes and i You're just never going to be done with this no no oh, you, finished. you finished them oh yeah. my god yeah i just spent the last month and a half doing something <laughs> that i've never done before which is binging the fuck and um and it was uh and it was nice and there was oh i know i just watched one where they were talking oh it was it was about a woman who was clearly autistic right mm-hmm. was 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 helping the police because she had that sort of um, savant and hmm. the main character, Murdoch, forgetting. Uh, this is a fictional show. Yeah, it's just a cop show, right? It's, oh, a, okay. it's, it's, a, it's one of those con- <laughs> like British constable shows, oh, right. but, it's, but it's set in Toronto in the early 1900s. Mm-hmm. And so the detective refers to this woman with autism as an imbecile. And the constable says, we don't say that word anymore. The current mm-hmm. word we're using is moron. <laughs> and it was so revelatory because that is exactly what it is, which, by the way, is a direct line to Doug Stanhope's bit about how they can change the word from imbecile to moron to um, retarded to developmentally disabled to um you know, per, person who spectrum. does this on the spectrum to whatever word. But he said, but my friend Tim will still call me it. Mm. He will change just as quickly as that word. Mm. And my friend Tim will call me the dumb the word uh, when I miss a, a, sh- a basket, right? When I, mm. when, whenever I do something, when I trip and fall, he will still call me 
that entire parade of words and it doesn't you're not changing you can't change tim mm. you can change the word but you're not you're never going to change tim and uh and i'm paraphrasing obviously but uh feel free to look into doug stanhope's published works okay mm -hmm. so uh but it did because these documentaries are so like a slice of life like it's a it's mm -hmm. a point in time where yeah. you're like, well, he then had 15 year old wives right. and you're like, it's not OK. And it mm -hmm. wasn't OK then, but it was allowed. Right. You, you know, and the guy mm -hmm. was was forcing young men to have sex with him, a right. la Kevin Spacey. And but a la everybody since that movie Spartica. Uh, so <laughs> Spartica, I forget. It was all I know is Tony Curtis. There was this thing. Some people prefer oysters. Um just random references at this at this late date. Shelly McClendon, have you had a good time? I have had a wonderful time. I'm sad that it's over. <laughs> it's amazing. This was these are fascinating uh, documentaries, you guys. Mm -hmm. Holy Ghost People, The Source Family, The Vow, Holy Hell and Devil's Playground, Tip of the Iceberg. Yes, there's so many. I even have backups in case we didn't in, in case we needed we had right. more time to fill. Right, right. You had five, right, but as is usual, when I don't know somebody very well, but I want them to like me, I end up talking more. <laughs> so everybody, Shelley McClendon uh, is the owner and proprietor of the Siren Theater in Portland, Oregon. Yes. SirenTheater.com, at Shells McBells on Instagram, mm -hmm. and SmoothJazzInferno.com <laughs> uh, on the internet. And I, Jackie Cation, will be in Portland, Oregon at the Siren Theater September 16th and 17th. So feel free uh, to make it a destination uh, if you live in that area. And if you don't, uh, well, just tell anybody you know that lives there. But thank you so much for doing the show. Thank you so much. This was a blast. Awesome. And Rangers, you know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh my God. Thank we you. why don't we just call that as the end of the show?